Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm Lee, and thank you so much for stopping by today to help me out with this project for today. Now, we're back in Studio B, as you can tell, uh, <clears throat> which means recently I'm doing something with a Mac Pro, either the Test 2010 Mac Pro or the 2008 Mac Pro. Today it is the 2008 3,1 Mac Pro. Uh, in the last episode in this little series, I upgraded to High Sierra. So the plan for today is to take a bit of a look at High Sierra and what it brought to us and then go about the process of upgrading the machine to Mojave. Once again using the DOS Dude 1 patcher since this machine natively is restricted to El Capitan. So if you think you'll be interested in taking a look at this process, please stay tuned. So, hi Sierra. I'll be honest with you, I had forgotten how much I liked Hi Sierra. In fact, Hi Sierra was the OS version that I anticipated so much that for the first time I jumped on the public beta channel. So I was seeing the last few beta releases leading up to the, the final release. And I don't think I was ever so excited to start using a new operating system. Uh, it's funny that for me at least, maybe because I'm shallow, my impressions of operating systems get colored by the wallpaper that comes in here, which is kind of... But I, I've always loved Leopard, largely because of the features that it brought, but I also I loved that you know, default Aurora wallpaper. Uh, I've always loved El Capitan. Again, that the cliff face of El Capitan is such a striking picture there. And this, this, this is just beautiful. You know, the colors are just so spectacular. Now, of course, you can put any wallpaper on there you want, so its features as soon as I finally got it running, you might want to take a look at that last installment where I struggled like crazy to get uh, High Sierra up and running. But once I did, one of the first things that struck me, all my email accounts came rolling in. And if I were to open mail, which I'm not going to do because you know something of a personal nature to someone might possibly pop up there. But anyhow, if I were to have opened mail on El Capitan, it'd be blank. There'd be nothing there because I never set it up. It's an outdated operating system with outdated security. So I installed Thunderbird, which is a modern version, and I set up all my mail in there. Similar with Safari, I installed Firefox. Up-to-date version, and that's what I use for my web browsing. Uh, but yeah, as soon as we got up and running with High Sierra, all the mail accounts came rolling in. Put in the passwords and they're all ready to go. I, like I say, I haven't actually done anything with mail. Uh, moving from there, contact. All the contacts just rolled in there immediately. Every calendar event is just there automatically. I didn't have to do anything. All of the notes I've made, and I use notes a lot, whether I've made the note on my iPhone or my iPad or a different Mac computer, they're all there. Messages, they're all there. It's, you know, it's pretty much amazing. High Sierra took the interoper interoperability of the Mac ecosystem, uh, Apple ecosystem, I should say, and transformed it into what we know today. Now, th there are differences. A lot of the built-in apps, Safari is outdated. It works fine. Mail is outdated. It does work. Uh, photos, uh, iTunes is, well, iTunes is still existing, which it doesn't in the most modern versions. The App Store is a little funky when you get into it, though functional. Uh, as far as non-standard apps that I use, uh, New Office is outdated a little bit, but it works. 
and oh, what, what, what the neo icon meant. Well, it doesn't matter. Da Vinci Resolve, of course, which is my video editor. Uh, on El Capitan, I had to use DaVinci Resolve 15. On High Sierra, we can get up to DaVinci Resolve 16. I believe with Mojave, we're going to be able to get up to Resolve 17, which would be interesting to see. All right, so on to the main event here. Uh, DOS Dude One's patches, all the patches that we've seen in previous uh, installments are there. This is the uh, directions page for the Mojave patch, which tells you everything you need to know. You know, the machines that can be upgraded to Mojave using these. The Mac Pro 3,1, which is what we have right here. Uh, and then a list of machines that are not supported. And, of course, you can get a copy of the patch tool right there. All right, now I have already downloaded that. So let's open that up. Application. And here we are. Now, I think I opened this up when I first downloaded it, but I am going to uh, right-click and select Open, but it probably should just open. Verifying. Boy, taking its time, isn't it? So we skip the verifying. All right. And yes, we're going to open it. And it didn't open. Oh, you're fighting me today. Okay, so we finally got there, and now it opened. Man, I don't know why that verification was taking so terribly long. All right, so I'm going to download Mojave. Save it to applications. Just checking to see if I had actually downloaded it already, but I don't think so. So we're going to save it. And now it's downloading. Now, this, of course, is going to take a while. Uh, my internet connection is fairly fast, but it still takes some time. So we'll bring you back when that's downloaded. Stay tuned. There are things I will appreciate about having Mojave. For instance, I keep trying to launch screen recordings by Command Shift 5. Oh well, so download is complete. That really downloaded pretty quickly. And we've saved it in applications. So we're going to use that to create a past USB installer now. Verified that. <coughs> Okay, now I have already formatted uh, a 32 gig gigabyte flash drive uh, which, to which I've given the name Mojave Unsupported, so we will select that. Verbose output, you, you don't really see much there, but I'm going to open it anyway just for the heck of it. And we'll start the operation. Authenticate. And we're going. So, yeah, this is going to take a while, uh, as, as it always does. So, 
to see the next step in the process once this installer USB drive is made. Stay tuned. And we're complete. That took a long time, but it did get done. All right, so we can close out of the patcher. Close that. All right, what I will need to do now is shut the machine down. I'll have to move the flash drive from its current location in USB 3 hub to one of the USB 2 uh, slots, uh, ports on the, on the machine itself. And then we'll get about installing Mojave. Stay tuned. All right, I'm not exactly sure why we have dual EFI boots showing up here. But we see our Plex Store SSD, our Crucial SSD, and macOS base system. This clearly is what we need. So, let's do it. Okay, uh, USB 2. Again, this is going to take a while, so stay tuned. And here we are in the installer. As, as we've seen before, we have... Uh, this time, there's a bigger selection here. Startup Security Utility, Disk Utility, Safari, Time Machine Restore, uh, and the ever-important macOS Post install. But all we really need to deal with here is the installation. Okay. And we want to put it on the Crucial SSD and continue. We shall see how long this takes. I'll let you know. You don't have to wait through it. Stay tuned. Well, interesting. Uh, almost exactly 25 minutes in, and we have booted to Operation Prohibited. All right. We know what to do. We're going to boot back into the installer. Sometimes we get a chime here. And we will. Oh, it didn't chime. Okay. And again, this is going to take uh, some time so stay tuned and as anticipated here we are click on Mac OS post install select model Macs, MacBooks, Mac minis Mac Pro 3 comma 1 all right Okay, good. Looks looks good here. Okay. Crucial SSD, which is where we just installed. And it applies the patches. Now, force cache rebuild. The only reason you really need to do that is if something has gone wrong and you've tried applying the patches again. Uh, I've never had to. So, we'll reboot. Stay tuned. Okay, we are booting up. That should go pretty quickly. It'll flip over to the black screen with the white apple momentarily. At least I hope it will. It's bound to.
Jesus. Huh. Okay, there we go. It wants to tease me. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to have to do some setting up. Uh, we'll see you on the desktop. Stay tuned. And yes, here we are, Mojave. I am awfully happy to be able to say that this was very, very, very smooth. <laughs> Unlike the High Sierra experience. Not that that was High Sierra's fault. Okay, just to check out about this Mac. 10, 14, 6, and we should be fully up to date. This should be the the most recent version with the most recent security updates. Uh, we should probably check software update, but I think I'm going to do that off camera. Yeah, it still has the 56 gig of RAM. There shouldn't be a problem with 64 on Mojave, so I'll be trying to put that back in, and, and I expect it'll just run. If not, well, I can always take it out again, can't I? Okay. Uh, and yeah, we have an App Store update. As expected, DaVinci Resolve. And again, I will deal with that off camera. So, finally a smooth <laughs> situation. Uh, no big worries at all, I'm happy to be able to say. So, be good to other people. They need it and deserve it. Be good to yourselves. It all has to start from that. We will make this world a better place, but it isn't yet, so please take very, very good and careful care. All right, I have some upgrades planned on this machine, uh, which I'm going to do as a separate video coming up, and then there'll be the video of the upgrade to Catalina and I have some tricks in mind for that whether they'll work or not we'll just have to find out and you'll just have to watch that video won't you okay and yes uh, more I'm sure that the next time there's a big sir update I will be trying to get it onto the test Mac Pro and yes as I keep saying th there is more GeForce uh, GeForce stuff coming uh, a lot and maybe G5 thing too so until those are available on the channel this has been Broken Electronics <laughs>